Hi everybody, welcome back. We are going to look at uh, Newton's second law. And Newton's second law is that the force will always equal the mass times the acceleration. So in this formula, m is for mass, which is in unit in kilograms, and acceleration um, is meters per second squared. So it's important to remember that the mass of an object okay, is measured in kilograms. That's its density. That doesn't change. Weight is a force. And it's important to separate those two. And we'll kind of look at why. And it's very common we say that, oh, the weight of an object is 50 kilograms. But that's actually to do with its mass because the weight is going to change versus um, if that object is on Earth, as if that object is on the moon, um, whereas the mass of an object will stay no matter where it is. Earth, the moon, the mass, it is what it is. Um, so if we think of this, um, if I take my box again, and we're going to remove friction, we're going to move those things. Um, for now, we're just going to leave this at its fundamental. So if I have a five kilogram box, and I am going to move it. So we're going to ignore the, the normal force, we're going to ignore the, the force of friction. If I want to move this object at a speed of 10 meters per second, how can I calculate? Sorry, 10 meters per second squared. So how am I going to calculate the force it's actually going to take to do this? It's right in. So this is nice and simple. Um, the force is going to equal my 5 kilogram mass multiplied by my 10 meters per second squared. And I will get a force of 50 newtons. So 1 newton is 1 kilogram per meter per second squared. One pound is about 4.5 newtons. Um, so that's the force that it would take. And the thing I like about this formula, nice linear formula to understand. If I wanted to move this object faster, so if my acceleration were to increase, I shouldn't say faster, I should say my acceleration, because acceleration and velocity are different, but if my acceleration is 10 meters per second squared, it would take 50 newtons. But if I wanted to make that 20 meters per second squared, that's my acceleration, well, that force would double because I doubled my acceleration. If I had a larger object, it's going to take a higher force, which goes right back to what Newton's first law was, that an object in motion will stay in motion. And if you want to move that object, you're going to have to exert a force on it. This helps us again to understand it. So we can kind of think, just keep, we keep it fundamental again with motors. We're not getting too in depth here. If we have, we go back to that. Um, I have a 10 kilogram motor and a 100 kilogram motor. Just as a fundamental, there's lots that goes into this, I know. Okay, but the rotor weighed 100 kilograms, the rotor weighed 10 kilograms. And they were moving at the same, or it was going to accelerate at the same rate, which would have a higher force. If they were to, if I wanted to move the 10 kilogram twice as fast, it's nice and simple. That force can tell us a lot. And depending on how I want, if you keep things simple, just plug some numbers. This is a nice linear formula. If I wanted to move both motors at 10 meters per second squared, you can see in this formula, if my mass goes up, my force would go up. And it would make sense. If I am trying to turn the rotor shaft of a very, very large motor compared to a small motor, it's going to take more energy to move that larger rotor. So this is just leaving that the fundamentals, but it's important for us to understand kind of just the basics behind what is happening so we can understand things like inrush current and starting torque and all of those. This is kind of where that fundamental comes from. So I hope this helps. See you in the next one.